The latest Genshin update is packed with a lot of new content, and these are the top 5 new features coming with the 4.6 version. I hope you're ready for a new underwater zone, because this time we're diving into what remains of Rumeria civilization. Now, to make this trip a bit better, our tour guide is going to be this kitty cat, who we can also see can swim alongside us in a bubble. But seriously, this zone looks pretty solid, I especially like this island called Village of Petrichor, and as far as I'm aware, if you have completed the third act of the Fontaine's Archon quest, you can immediately teleport to this new zone. Now, in addition, a new world boss called Statue of Marble and Brass is also going to be a available in version 4.6, which means it's very likely this big dude might end up in some future abyss cycles, so hopefully it's not an annoying fight. But going a little outside of Fontaine, there's going to be a new Sino story quest, and what's interesting about it is that it will feature this new character called Sethos. I have no idea if I pronounced it correctly, but basically we're going back to the Desert Kingdom once again along with Sino. Finally, we're also getting Arlecchino's story quest, and one of the interesting things that was mentioned in the livestream is that we might finally get to learn about the reason why she's being called Father. Just like with every update, we're getting a bunch of new events, and this time around, the major event is going to take place in Inazuma, where the music festival will be held. And this major event will be comprised of three phases. In the first phase, you will get to play a rhythm minigame. In the second phase, I think you just basically go on to fetch quests and obtain some materials. And in the final phase, which honestly looks most interesting, you will need to finish songs by listening and filling in the missing notes. Great for those with good musical hearing, not so great for others. But yeah, yeah, participate in this major event, and you can claim a free copy of Goro, as well as this Nightwind Horn instrument, that I'm sure will be utilized by some bards who travel into co-op worlds to play their music. But when it comes to smaller events, Windtrace is making a comeback, and it seems like it will be a lot more complicated than we're used to. For example, now when you get caught as a rebel, you get sent to a prison, which after some time you can leave, or others can help you leave, but get caught for a second time and you're out. Also, you'll need to activate these four devices to win as rebels, but the full rules will be covered once the event is out. Now, another event that's making a return is Vibro Crystal Applications, where you basically pick up a bunch of buffs that hopefully will work together nicely and use either your own or trial characters to beat the challenges. There's also going to be a boss battler event, featuring a chef who has recently come back from Natlin. Although, in a nutshell, this is one of those events where you just enable a ton of modifiers if you're a whale and crush the bosses. Finally, for the TCG crowd, new cards and some events are going to be introduced with 4.6 update, while at the same time, Overflowing Mastery is yet again making a return. After a long trip to get some milk, Father is finally here. So, Arlecchino is going to be the new 5-star Pyro Polearm unit in the 4.6 update, and honestly, it's kinda hard to explain how she works without a fully dedicated video. But in a nutshell, when Arlecchino uses her elemental skill, she will deal AoE damage in this super cool way and apply a debuff on enemies called Blood Depth Directive, which will damage them periodically. But the catch here is that if she uses her charge attacks or burst and damage the enemies with this Blood Depth Directive, this debuff will be removed and she will gain a certain amount of Bond of Life. Now, when she has Bond of Life, her normal attacks will become infused with Pyro, deal more damage, and consume Bond of Life at the same time. On top of that, one of her passive talents will increase her Pyro damage, but at the same time, she cannot be healed by anyone in the team except by herself. And how can she heal herself? Well, she will need to use her Burst, which will not only heal her based on the amount of attack and bond of life she has, but it will also reset her skill's cooldown. Right now, I would say that Arlecchino doesn't feel like your usual 5-star character, because on one hand, she feels restrictive because you cannot heal her. Although that makes total sense, because if she could be healed, Bond of Life would be quickly removed, and without it, she loses the majority of her damage. So I just wonder how well she can survive on her own, and how easy it will be to fill up energy for her burst in order to do some healing. Also, because she is so unique thanks to Bond of Life, I wonder if we will ever see more characters who utilize this same mechanic, because right now, we know that Bond of Life can be found on some equipment, but that's pretty much it. But basically, you will need to play around her Bond of Life mechanic in order to deal the best damage. And I will talk about this more in my pre-release video, which is going to be available very soon, so make sure to subscribe to my channel. 
Oh, and check this out. She can also hover around like a fallen angel with this one wing she extends. Anyway, moving over to banners. In phase one, Arlecchino and Lini will be the featured five stars. And at the same time, Arlecchino's signature five star pole arm will also be available to pull for. And it's called Crimson Moon Semblance. While in phase two, Scaramouche is making a return along with Baiju as the featured five stars. So I feel like both phases are pretty stacked and it's pretty cool to see two Harbingers back to back. And yeah, one last thing to mention would be the new artifact sets that are coming with the 4.6 update, although Hoyo decided not to reveal any details officially, at least not yet as I'm making this video. So while we wait, here's a JPEG for you to look at. So, there's a new weekly boss, and we're gonna be fighting the Knave. Honestly, she looks super cool, and it seems like the fight is made up of two phases, where in the first one, she's just messing around in her usual form, while in the second phase, she becomes this badass harbinger in an altered form. But if this follows the usual trends, Arlecchino's talent materials will drop from, well, Arlecchino boss. Although one nice thing that was mentioned in the livestream is that you can quick challenge this boss without needing to do prerequisite story quest, as long as you're adventure rank 40. So yeah, a badass new boss and another weekly task for the never-ending grind. So it seems like a ton of quality of life changes are coming with the 4.6 update. First, Treasure Compass is getting updated. Now it will display treasure chests on the minimap, and on top of that, opening the chest will also reset the compass's cooldown. And I think this is actually great because sometimes I go back and try to 100% complete areas, but it gets really tiresome looking for those chests. So I feel like this new Treasure Compass change will motivate me to complete older areas. And speaking of motivating players, a lot of new portraits will be added to the game, and you can unlock them by completing various quests. Although if you have already completed some of these quests, the portraits will be already unlocked. So yeah, Hoyo wants to provide some incentive for completing those old quests we abandoned some time ago. Next, it will be easier to recognize your friend's co-op requests, because now they will show up their given nickname, and this will also be recognized in all the menus as far as I'm aware. And then, the map itself is also being overhauled a bit. The region selection screen will be made more compact, Hoyo's words, not mine, to me it looks a bit bulkier personally, and then some pins like domains, card players, and custom markers will be moved to a new map settings interface. Now, the Serenity pod is also getting a ton of changes. I'm not gonna list all of them, but for example, you will be able to craft 10 furnishings at a time now. Some items will be discounted, and you're also gonna be able to quick obtain materials when crafting, so less menu hopping. And if you're missing out on some materials, you can add them to a queued list, which is basically a wishlist system. And then my personal favorite change that's coming with 4.6 is the new focused experience mode for quests. It's essentially a toggle that supposedly will prevent characters or scenes from being occupied by other quests. And if I understand this correctly, this means we might not need to deal with that annoying situation where you have to complete a bunch of random quests before you can continue with your own current quest. Oh, and reputation quests will be sorted into their own red markers and even some quest items will now be highlighted in the quest menu. But yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to the new 4.6 update. Let me know what you guys think about this version. And as always, I hope you found this video useful and I'd appreciate it if you could press the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.